Hello and welcome to Art with Mr P. This is our second week of drawing. Now I'd like you to start this week by looking at a piece of artwork online. I'd like you to search for The Goldfish by Paul Clay. Now he produced this in 1925 so it's nearly a hundred years old. Now when you're looking at The Goldfish by Paul Clay have a look at the sorts of lines that he had decided to use. Look at the shapes that he's produced. Think about the colours that he's used. Is the main fish bright or dark? Is the background bright or dark? Are there other creatures in the artwork? Now, why are we looking at this? Well, it's the starting point for what we're going to do ourselves. But also, looking at the artwork of famous artists has three immediate advantages. First of all, it can just make us feel good. Looking at a picture is a little bit like reading a story. Secondly, it helps us to read pictures better. The more we look at pictures, the better we get at looking at them. What do you imagine is the story behind the goldfish picture? And thirdly, and most importantly, looking at pictures is just fun. Now it's about time we had some fun, so uh, let's get creative, let's have some fun. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at Paul Clay's The Goldfish and you've had a chance to read the story. So essentially what we can see in the middle is a fish and the fish is, well, it's not actually gold, it's yellow. Which is interesting because in French, of course, goldfish isn't goldfish at all. A goldfish is a poisson rouge, which is a red fish. Um, but actually, most goldfish are orange, aren't they? Anyway, going back to Paul Clay, I'm going to choose. I think I'm going to choose the red, and very carefully, I'm going to try to draw not any fish, but Paul Clay's fish. And I think. It looks something like that shape. I notice the tail is red, so I'm going to put red in. And I'm using a very purposeful, fairly smooth line. Now, I also notice that the dorsal fin, the big fin on the back, actually, is just a series of spikes. So I think I'm going to try and put a bit of expression into that line and draw those coming down like that. There's another small fin it looks like a bit further down and a fin underneath. So you notice although we've got an outline for the body there are, there's no outline for the fins all we can see are the, are the spiky bits. We've got a little bit of red round here where the gill is, I think, where the fish breathes. But like most fish, this fish has got a big eye. Now, it does look fairly reddish to me. And it looks like a series of concentric circles. So that's what I'm going to do. So you can see how our drawings are inspired by Paul Clay. But actually, they don't look like Paul Clay's at all. Because that's not the idea. We're not telling the same story. We're retelling the story, yeah, but not using exactly the same words. So I'm going to go, I'm going to get the yellow out now. And I'm going to start putting in some more of the fish here. Now to me, the eye looks white. But most of the fish looks like it's yellow to me. 
So we're very much looking at the visual elements here of shape, line and colour. Now when you think that Paul Clay drew this originally, or painted this originally, in 1925, if you look at some of the other kind of art that existed in 1925, you would kind of realise how revolutionary, how different this was compared to what so many people were doing at the time. So take your time, don't rush it, get it right now. Looking back at the original picture by Paul Clay, I can see that there are fish in the corners and they look like they're all swimming away. So there seems to be a red one up here. It looks something like that. And there's a red one down here. Now it may be that you have an aquarium in your house for fish. Maybe you've got different kind of fish in mind. Much more the fish of your aquarium than maybe the fish that you eat. This one looks like it has some blue or purple in it. I'm going to go for purple, I think. And I can see that there's some markings on here. So these markings, the difference in colour and the markings, actually, make the fish look like it's got texture. Now, I don't know how scaly you think the texture is, but it could be scaly, couldn't it? It could be like the scales on the fish. So I'm taking my time, trying to get this absolutely right. Yeah? Very important. This fish over here has got some patterns on it that look like triangles to me. So I'm going to put those on. Like that. These are definitely scaly, aren't they? A little mouth. Uh, you've probably noticed that the background is really dark. Yeah? If you've got darker paper, Try using that, or actually, you know what you could do? You could draw these bits and then collage them onto a dark background. So I'm not going to bother doing the rest of the fish. That's for you to, to work out. Yeah? I do notice that there are some plants in the background. There's something down here that looks something like that. So like I say, what we're doing, we're being inspired by Paul Clay. Yeah? And what that essentially means is looking at Paul Clay's picture, working out what the story is, and then rewriting the story, but using our own shapes and lines and textures and colours. Oh, there's a nice one up here, I like this one. I think it looks a bit like this. Now, you might not think much of this picture, but you can see the imagination, can't you? You can see that there's a vision here. These are not marks and shapes and lines that you make by accident. So my invitation to you is to keep going until you think that you've finished telling the story. Enjoy it.
1925, Paul Clay produced The Goldfish. We've used it as a starting point for our own work. So in 2020, you too produced The Goldfish. Now we used Paul Clay's Goldfish as a starting point to inspire our own work. We haven't copied it. What we've kind of done is written our own version of it. Yeah, we've drawn our own version of it. Yeah? It's a bit like a retelling. Now, why have we done this? Well, not only do we enjoy doing it and it makes us feel good, but it helps with how we learn how to read pictures. Well done. Next week, we'll be looking at painting again. See you then.